Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. This week, we're going to start a new series on neuroinflammation. What are the faces of neuroinflammation? What kind of conditions do we think about when we think about inflammatory processes in the brain? Oftentimes, people just think about pathology. What is the cause? What is the um, protein? Or what is the mechanism of this particular disease? Sometimes there is an underlying factor called inflammation or neuroinflammation that impacts across multiple disease processes. Today we're going to talk about a few of them. So if we look at this, the faces of neuroinflammation. Number one, Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is basically thought of as short-term memory loss or even confusion, uh, long-term memory loss, losing direction, and so forth. We think of it as a protein aggregation issue with amyloid plaques and some other things. Now, the underlying mechanism to this is inflammatory, right? There's something called DAMPs and PAMPs that affect uh, uh, inflammatory processes with your immune system that create inflammation and crosses the blood-brain barrier, right? So if we get into the brain and cause inflammation and you get these protein aggregation issues, then you can develop Alzheimer's disease. But the underlying mechanism can be inflammatory. So what can create inflammatory conditions for a patient who has Alzheimer's? It could be that they have gluten sensitivity and they didn't know it. And every time you had gluten, it causes inflammation. Another thing could have been just poor sugar regulation, such as insulin resistance or diabetes, which can create circulatory issues and then uh, insulin surges and causes inflama inflammatory processes that follow. So there are inflammatory loads that can occur and can create or enhance the acceleration of Alzheimer's disease. Another one is MS or multiple sclerosis. MS is a demyelination disease, right? The myelin of the, of the nerve tissue will be destroyed. It's an autoimmune condition. And then the autoimmune condition causes inflammation or an inflammatory process could have triggered the process of demyelination. So when we look at multiple sclerosis, it's also an underlying mechanism of inflammation. Another one is autism spectrum. Now, autism spectrum can be quite controversial. Is it genetic? Is it acquired? There is some genetic components to it, obviously, right? There's been more research that's coming out and so forth. However, the underlying mechanism could also be inflammatory. Sometimes uh, the mother, while carrying the child, may have conditions that create inflammation and they don't realize they have it, right? Or it could have been just poor uh, lifestyle, diet, etc. And it can create an inflammatory condition within the mother, which can be transferred over to the fetus. So when we look at autism spectrum, do we say, is it only genetic? No. Is it environmental? Just environmental? No. It's probably just a combination of different things that can occur, can create an autism spectrum disorder, right? Another one is concussion. So the concussion is the one where you have a traumatic injury or a mild traumatic injury. The football player, the girl that plays soccer or gymnastics and falls, right? Um, these types of uh, brain uh, injuries, which really don't show up on MRI, can have long lasting effects because it activates something called the microglia in our brain. And this activation of the microglia can't be dampened um, and it creates inflammatory processes in the brain. And then just certain little stimulus can create more inflammation or a uh, activation of the microglia. So when we look at inflammation or neuroinflammation, brain inflammation, not just in the blood, it can create a host of different conditions to be exacerbated or can trigger these conditions to come on. So it's very important to understand what neuroinflammation can do uh, in our health. So join me for the next few weeks and we're gonna continue the discussion of neuroinflammation and the health impacts that it has, okay? My name is Dr. Jen Sung, we're at Clinical Excellence 
means excellent results. We'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side.